good morning students how are you doing i think you all are good be safe at home and be healthy and energetic let's move on to our physics class the previous classes we have been discussing about the uses of dimensional analysis there are three uses in that two uses we have discussed what are the uses convert a physical quantity from one system of unit to another system of unit and check the dimensional correctness of a given equation given physical equation and the last one is establish relations among various physical quantities so today we are going to see the third use third use that is to establish the relation among various physical quantities to establish the relation among various physical quantities that means many physical quantities are given with some data we should find out the relation among the physical quantities with the help of this dimensional analysis let's see how it is suppose q is a physical quantity Answer Q is a physical quantity. This Q depends upon another quantity such as Q one, Q two, and Q three. Q depends upon Q one, Q two, Q three. So I can write Q is proportional to Q is proportional to Q one, Q two, and Q three. Right. More correctly, we can return Q one. Q is proportional to Q one power a, Q two power b, and Q three power c. Because we don't know these quantities, powers, and all. Square cube or power one that we don't know, so we can assume that this Q proportional to the quantity Q one with the power a and Q two with the power b and Q three with the power c. Okay. Again, we can rewrite this expression as Q is equal to proportionality. We are going to remove, so we should introduce a constant. Say k is a constant, so k q one power a, q two power b, and q three power c, where k is known as the dimensionless constant. Dimensionless constant in the sense this k has no dimension, but it is a constant value that we will get from the experiment. Okay, all right. Now, how can we find out the relation among Q, Q one, Q two, Q three? That's our task. So, the dimensional formula of Q one, Q two, Q three, and Q, you have to substitute in this formula. Okay, by substituting the dimensional formula of Q. Q one, Q two, Q three. We can find out the relations. We should use the principle of homogeneity of dimension. Principle of homogeneity of dimension. Already this I have explained. Principle of homogeneity of dimension. So this we have to apply, and we have to. Equate the power of m l t on both sides. Okay, it has a dimensional formula with the m l t. It has a dimensional formula with the m l and t. It has a dimensional formula with the m l and t. So we have to substitute the dimensional formula and we should apply the principle of homogeneity. Also, we have to equate the powers. 
equate the powers of m l t on both sides are you clear so when we made equal on both sides we can get the values of a b c so by substituting the values of a b c in this equation automatically we will get the relations among these quantities q q1 q2 q3 have you got an idea how to establish a relation among various physical quantities so the physical quantity will be given that will be depends upon some other quantities that is the way they will be giving the problem so we can consider q as a physical quantity which depends upon q1 q2 q3 so i can write this in terms of directly proportional to q1 q2 q3 more correctly we can write this with the power a b c we don't know about this powers of q1 q2 q3 and proportionality we can remove by introducing a constant k is known as dimensionless constant so we can write q equal to k q1 power a q2 power b q3 power c after framing this format we should apply the dimensional formula for all the quantities q q1 q2 q3 then according to the principle of homogeneity we have to equate the power of m l t on both sides okay principle of homogeneity means here equating the power of m on both sides equating the power of l on both sides equating the power of t on both sides so from that we will be getting the value of a b c by substituting this a b c we can find the relations among q q1 q2 q3 let's do the problem then you can have a clear idea about that all right children example 1.15 is given in your book that is obtain an expression obtain an expression for the time period t of a simple pendulum the time period t depends upon mass m of the bob length l of the pendulum and acceleration due to gravity g at the place where the pendulum is suspended constant k equal to 2 pi this is the question i repeat the problem obtain an expression for the time period t of a simple pendulum the time period t depends upon mass m of the bob length l of the pendulum and acceleration due to gravity g at the place where the pendulum is suspended constant k equal to 2 pi now find the solution we can find the relation among t m l and g all right so example 1.15 solution according to the question we have to find out the formula for time period of a simple pendulum t t formula we should find and it also given us this time period depends upon so we can write t proportional to mass of the bob so i can write t power m sorry t proportional to m and length of the pendulum l and acceleration due to gravity g okay so t proportional to m l g so more correctly we can write this g equal to the constant proportionality constant that also given in your book k is equal to 2 pi k into m power a l power b and g power c so here k is a dimensionless constant that value is given as 2 pi now let's see find the relations how to find we have to substitute the dimensional formula for t m l g okay so according to the dimensions for t the dimension is t and k k is a dimensionless constant so we don't want to apply the dimension of the k there is no dimension at all now 
m power a l power b g power c so m is mass depends upon mass so the dimension is m capital m m power a then l is length so dimension is l l power b then g is acceleration due to gravity what is the dimensional formula for acceleration due to gravity l t raised to minus 2 so the whole power c okay now here actually t power 1 we can consider because t equal to t power 1. so now we have substituted the dimensions of the given relations given quantities so this we can simplify and write since we have to equate the power of m l t on both sides here we can write this m power is 0 l power is 0 t power is 1 clear yeah next this side m power a only 1 m isn't it then l power here b is there here c is there so i can write b plus c okay and t power t power minus 2c t power minus 2c so you can write like this okay m power a l power b plus c t power minus 2c here m power 0 l power 0 t power now what is the next step we are going to equate the power on both sides or comparing the power on both sides. Okay. So, comparing the power on both sides. Power of what? M, L, T. So, first comparing the power of M, what can we write? a equal to 0 next comparing the here the comparing the power of m next comparing the power of l b plus c equal to 0 b plus c equal to 0 next comparing the power of t minus 2c minus 2c is equal to 1 clear okay? Now we can find out the value of a, b, c by solving these equations. This you may have learned in the max class. So a equal to 0 that we know, isn't it? a equal to 0. Then b plus c equal to 0 means we can write b equal to minus c. Isn't it? Yeah. Minus 2c equal to 1. So what is c? c is equal to minus 1 by 2 c is equal to minus 1 by 2 1 by 2 so minus 1 by 2 if c is equal to minus 1 by 2 then what is the value of b b is equal to minus of minus 1 by 2 so that is equal to 1 by 2 clear so we have got the values as a equal to 0 b equal to 1 by 2 and c equal to minus 1 by 2 Okay, now we can substitute these values a, b, c in the equation t. So already we have, we noted the equation, now what equation? That is t is equal to k into, t is equal to k into m power a, l power b and g power c. So that. So here we can write t is equal to k into m power a power a is equal to 0. So m power 0. L power L, b is equal to 1 by 2. And g power g is equal to minus 1 by 2. Clear? Now let us write g is equal to k value is given as 2 pi am i right so 2 pi into m power 0 anything power 0 is equal to 1 so this is 1 and l l power l power 1 by 2 means we can write root of l g power minus 1 by 2 means we can write 1 by root of g 1 by root of g 
right so we can say that the time period t is equal to 2 pi into root of l by g root of l by g. this is the expression for time period of simple pendulum are you able to understand this so first we should write the physical quantities given quantities in terms of this format t proportional to mlg and we can write t is equal to k into m power a l power b g power c k is given now we can apply the dimensions of all the quantities we have substituted all the dimensions and here there is no m and l so we can write m power 0 l power 0 now we can compare the power of MLT on both sides. By comparing the power of M on both sides, we will be getting A equal to 0. Comparing the power of L on both sides, B plus C equal to 0. And minus 2 is equal to 1 by comparing the power of T. So when we solve this, we will be getting A, B, C value. A already we know. B is minus C. B plus C equal to 0 means B is equal to minus C. And from this C equal to minus 1 by 2. So B is equal to 1 by and we can write t is equal to k m power a l power b g power c we can substitute the values t equal to k into m power 0 l power 1 by 2 g power minus 1 by 2 so from this t is equal to 2 pi into m power 0 is 1 and this we can write as root of l divided by root of g so hence the time period of simple pendulum t is equal to 2 pi into root of l by g let's see one more problem Example 1.16 The force F acting on a body moving in a circular path depends on mass of the body M, velocity V and radius R of the circular path. Obtain the expression for the force by dimensional analysis method. Take the value of K equal to 1. Once again, the force F acting on a body moving in a circular path depends on mass of the body m velocity v and radius r of the circular path obtain an expression for the force by dimensional analysis method k varies equal to 1 shall we find the solution okay example problem 1.16 According to the problem force is depends upon force acting on a body depends upon mass of the body velocity of the body and radius of the circular path so f proportional to m v r so next step we can write with the powers and F proportional to M power A, B power B, R power C. More correct to say F is equal to K into M power A, B power B, R power C. The next step is substitute the dimensional formula for all the quantities. So what is the dimensional formula for force? For force mlt raised to minus 2 for mass m for velocity for velocity lt power minus 1 for radius radius means the distance so we can write the dimensions as n ok now we can substitute these dimensional formula in the force equation. This equation. So for force, I can write m l t power minus 2 equal to k has no dimensions. We can leave it and m m power a. So m power a. Next velocity l t power minus 1 l t power minus 1 the whole power b next radius l 
L power C. Okay. Now we can compare the powers. So before that, M L T raised to minus 2 means M power 1 L power 1. Here only M power A L power B plus C is there and T power minus B. Okay. L power B, T power minus B. So you can write as L power B and L power C as L power B plus C. Then T power minus B. Okay. Now compare the power on both sides. Compare the power of M L T on both sides. What will be the step? A equal to 1. Combine the power of M. A equal to 1. Combine the power of L. B plus C equal to 1. Combine the power of T. Minus B equal to minus 2. Minus B equal to minus 2. Okay. So by solving this values. A equal to 1. So B plus C equal to 1 means. B equal to 1 minus C. B equal to 1 minus C. And from this we know. B equal to 2. B equal to minus 2 means B equal to 2. So if you substitute B equal to 2 in this equation. What we will be getting? 2 equal to 1 minus C from the C equal to what? We need C, isn't it? So, C we can take it as this side. C equal to 1 minus 2. So, what will be the answer? C is equal to minus 1. Minus C equal to 2 minus 1. 1. So, C equal to minus 1. Anyway, C will be equal to minus 1. So we got A equal to 1, B equal to 2 and C equal to minus 1. Now we should substitute all these values in this equation. Isn't it? So F is equal to F is equal to K into m power m power a so a equal to 1 so m power 1 and v power b b equal to 2 isn't it so v square r power c so r c is minus so r power minus 1 so what is the answer tell me f is equal to k value is given as 1 in your problem so we can take k equal to 1 so the answer is m v square by r. This is the formula. m v square divided by r. Since k equal to 1 experimentally. Okay. So the force acting on the moving body is equal to m v square by r. This is r. This is v. Are you able to understand? So, we have written the formula by, give, by the given quantities f proportional to m power a b power b, b power b r power c and f equal to k into m power a b power b r power c. Then we have substituted all the dimensions of these quantities. Then by substituting the dimensions, we will be getting this step. Comparing the power on both sides. According to the principle of homogeneity, we have to add the same power on uh, m, l and t. So, m power a L power B plus C and T power minus B. By comparing all the powers, we will be getting A, B, C value. By solving the A, B, C value, we will be getting. So, by substituting all the A, B, C value in the previous expression, we will be getting F is equal to M, V square by R. Okay, students, I hope you have understood these three uses and you can able to find the relations among various physical quantities with the help of the dimensional analysis. Okay, yeah. Now the last topic in your first lesson that is 
limitations of dimensional analysis. So what are the limitations of dimensional analysis? First one, this method gives no information about the dimensionless constants in the formula like 1, 2, etc. pi e. This that this method gives no information about the dimensionless constants in the formula. If the formula contains the numbers, that means dimensionless constant, if there is no dimension, that formula we will not take an into analyze. Dimensional analysis will not give any information about that because it has no dimension. Okay, so dimensionless constant formula, we cannot use this dimensional analysis method. Second point, this method cannot decide whether the quantity is vector or scalar. Vector and scalar we will be going to learn detail in the second unit. Anyway, you have an idea about vector and scalar. Scalar means it has only the magnitude. Vector means it has both magnitude and direction. So, by using the dimensional formula, can we find out whether the equation is scalar quantity or a vector quantity? Definitely not, isn't it? So, that was one of the limitations. This method cannot decide whether the given quantity is a vector or a scalar. Third limitation, this method is not suitable to derive relations involving trigonometric, exponential and logarithmic functions. Very true because trigonometric formula has no dimensional formula. Sin theta plus theta and all there is no dimensional formula. Exponential. Exponential means we will be having some of the formula may like e power x, e power y and so on. So the exponential formula, exponential relations also we cannot able to find by using this dimensional analysis. Logarithmic functions that also we can't use this dimensional formula. So this method is not suitable to derive the relations involving trigonometric exponential and logarithmic function. Okay, if there is a e power log and all there, uh, we will not use this dimensional formula to find the relations. It cannot be applied to an equations involving more than three physical quantities. That also absolutely correct. If there is more than physical three physical quantities, it is very difficult to apply this dimensional formula. Because M, L and T are the basic fundamental dimensions, isn't it? So, this cannot be applied to an equation involving more than three physical quantities. Fifth one, it can check only... It can check on whether a, it can only check a whether, sorry, sorry. It can only check on whether a physical relation is dimensionally correct but not the correctness of the relation. What does it mean? It can check only the equation is dimensionally correct or not. But absolutely it is correct or not we can't able to say. For example, using the dimensional analysis, S equal to ut plus 1 by 3 at square is dimension, dimensionally correct. Whereas the correct relation is S equal to ut plus half at square. Are you able to understand? We can check the dimensional correctness of the given equation by using the dimensional analysis method. We have seen the second use, isn't it? So by using the second use, we will be substituting the value of S, U, T, A, T. And we will be comparing each term is getting, that is the right hand side and the left hand side is getting the same equation or not. So here, U, T plus 1 by 3, A, T square, S, yes, we will be getting the same dimension on both sides. S yes, equal to U, T plus half A, T square, here also we will be getting the same dimensions. So which one is correct? Because 1 by 3 has no dimension, 1 by t has 2 has no dimension. So, both the equations are dimensionally correct. But we know that s equal to ut plus half at square is absolutely correct. 
Understand? Can I get my point? So, this method can be able to check only whether the equation is dimensionally correct or not. But absolutely it is correct or not, we can't be able to say. So, these are the limitations of dimensional analysis. Do this problem, okay? S equal to ut plus half a t square. Check the dimensional correctness of this equation. This is a homework for you. Check the dimensional correctness of the given equation. S equal to ut plus half a t square. That is a homework for you. So, anyway, let me repeat the limitations. Limitations of dimensional analysis. This method gives no information about the dimensionless constants. This method cannot decide whether the given quantity is vector or scalar. This method is not suitable to derive relations involving trigonometric, exponential and logarithmic functions. Then this cannot be applied to an equation involving more than three physical quantities and it cannot check the equation is absolutely correct or not. It can check only the dimension, uh, equation is dimensionally correct or not. Okay, this limitation is also very important. So, dimension analysis topic is very, very, very important for the examination point of view. Okay, okay, students, be safe at home, learn well. Thank you.